Hello and welcome to my channel, Nicola Crook Art. Uh, today I'm going to be painting three red trees. Uh, it's, it's a really pretty painting, but it starts off uh, not so promising to start off with, and you'll see why. Now, at the moment, I'm using two canvas boards and I'm um, scraping some paint across, just using an old debit card and there's a mixture of sap green and white, uh, titanium white and gold, gold emit, which uh, I, I love that kind of mix. It's a really rich colour. And as I'm scraping it along, I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing with this. I'm, I've got an idea that I want to make two paintings that belong together but I'm not sure how I'm going to go about it. So I'm just playing. It's, it's what I do. I like to play when I'm working on my paintings. And the best paintings are actually the ones where I've enjoyed the process mostly. So I've done the sky area, but now I'm having a go at the land and I've added in some, uh, that would be indigo into that mix there. Indigo is one of my favourite blues that I like to use and there's the red. I love red. Uh, red sets seems to be popping up in my paintings a lot in recent years and in particular this year. So I'm, I'm I keep playing with it so there it is. The red has been added but I didn't have an idea that I was going to make a red painting. I didn't have that idea. I just wanted something that would make the foreground come forward. I'm adding a bit of gold there as well. And as you scrape the... Ah, there you go. I'm, I'm, can you see how I'm scraping upwards? That's to give an illusion that there might be grasses there. And here's another favourite tool of mine. This is cling film. Cling film that I've, uh, I've twisted into like a, a tape kind of idea. And I just I'll rub it along the wet paint and scraping upwards, it creates this feeling that there might be grasses there. And this tool here is the top of a pen. Uh, a big pen and I love how it can scrape right through wet paint like that and make marks so that's that's fun to do and I just found that by accident I was looking around one day to see if there was anything that I could use now here I'm actually scraping into the sky area a tree that I would like to paint into it so I'm, I'm just playing around uh, one of the trees that the one on the right is more oak shape and the one on the left which is the painting that I will be showing you the rest of is three conifer type trees there's no significant uh, type I'm just making it up as I go along so I've uh, popped my name into the paint there but you'll find out later on that I've actually changed that around later. Now here we go. So I'm just using a round brush. I don't even know what size round brush this is and I'm popping in uh, some, some idea of a tree shape triangular tree shape there and as you can see I'm doing it with the sap green and I think there is a mix of gold in there as well. I'm attempting to put in some kind of shadow and I've used the indigo in order to do that and I'm playing around with it. I'm not convinced even at this stage that I'm liking it but I am keep going and I'm not even sure I like the shapes of them just yet. They feel like they're too thin. Uh, 
I'm, I think they're too tall as well so I've, I've used a little bit of uh, water clean water on my brush and I'm just wiping off the top there that simple way of just getting rid of some paint if you don't want it there and here I'm putting in the trunks of the trees again I'm not even sure I like those they look a bit wimpy but we'll see how it goes and I, and I just play around with the shaping and the colours because this is a playtime process it's not a commission it's for me it's for nobody else and this I really encourage other people to do the same thing just play I think as adults we lose the art of playing and I think if you can get back into just enjoying the process you will have better results from that now I'm I'm keep dabbing onto the the trees there the lights and the dark areas because I do want them to feel a little bit on the three-dimensional side it isn't realistic but at least have that illusion of a three-dimensional space uh, <laughs> I usually find that when I'm a bit stuck and I don't know what I'm going to do I end up finger painting so you'll see me um, occasionally just pick up some paint and dab it wherever I fancy I'm going in at the foreground now again this is this is a tactic of I don't know what to do with the trees so I'm going to have a go at the forefront of it, it it's kind of, it's kind of uh, fascinating watching myself back in this way uh, that these are this is a procrastination technique uh, I'm going over it it does add to the overall texture in the end but that but it, I'm not really doing anything important at this stage I'm just figuring it out as you can see I'm starting to make the trees wider uh, less wimpy looking which I'm very pleased about that that's pretty much where they stay and I'm still adding in the shadows I have this idea that they need to stay green at this stage the, the trees are green so I'm going to keep them green and I'm just playing around with trying to make it work but there's something dull and boring about them at this stage and I think I'm not going to figure this out straight away it takes uh, a long time for this to happen so I'm going back into my foreground here I'm using a palette knife now a palette knife is a really useful tool so you can add on and it creates lovely textures if you scrape up and around uh, as you can see I'm, I'm making patterns on there just by scraping upwards and you can use the edge of it to add in lines if you want to you can scrape through using the tip a very useful tool and well worth having um, this is one of my favorite ones it's a tiny little thing great for this size painting if I was to go for a bigger painting then I would need a bigger palette knife simple as that so uh, use the right tools for the right size painting and again I'm using sap green and gold here and a, possibly a little bit of titanium white as well in there and out comes the big pen well big pen lid I should say I'm just scraping through keeping those textures going I'm just redefining the background there I just want it to still show up and by adding in the indigo with a bit of titanium white making that pale blue it just makes that pop a little bit better but it has created a 
situation where the green just looks wrong it just looks wrong so I attempt at this stage to see if I can make the trees blue uh, so I, up here I've got a little bit of titanium, oh, excuse me, titanium white and the indigo and I'm having a go at uh, just painting over the green and just seeing if I can, I can improve it, help it along somehow and I'm thinking at the same time is this working, is this working and it's not working and I know this now it's not working because it's too pale and it's it needs to be on the warmer side and obviously this is on the cooler side although I've got the blue there it's just not working for me now I had a day of staring at it it's surprising you, you take a long time doing these paintings and you watch these videos and you see me whizzing through this is times two by the way um i don't paint this fast normally and it, most of the time of painting is actually standing back and staring at it and going does this work or not so i've decided to pick up on the fact that there is that yellow in the top right hand corner there that I smudged in with my finger uh, which sort of represents the sun so I decided to put in the yellow well actually it's gold <coughs> and I also then pick up the red now I didn't intend on the red it happened to be on the palette and I just had a mad moment of going oh I'm going to do this so that's what I did I picked it up and even at this stage, it's I'm thinking I've ruined this, but I keep going, adding it in with that palette knife, and I'm just dabbing the paint on. I'm adding just a smidge of the indigo. If you can see that it's starting to get darker on the left hand side, that's because I've added in indigo. Now here I am, I'm using my fingers again, I'm smudging in. Now here's a, a bit of warning about using your fingers. You should use gloves, really, you should use gloves. But there is another tip that you could do and that is put hand lotion onto your hands before you do anything like this because it creates some form of barrier between your skin and the paints and there is specialist creams out there that you can do it but I do believe that you can use just a standard cream but don't quote me on that look into it I'm not an expert on that I just know that there there is issues uh, so it's one of those things of uh, do as I say not what I'm doing because although I'm using my fingers, I don't recommend that you use your fingers uh, without good, good research on what you're going to be doing. Now I've finished the smudging a bit and I've decided that obviously the trunks need changing. I'm putting some kind of uh, idea of shadow underneath and I'm beginning to think, oh, I like this, but there is an issue, isn't there? Of balance I'm wanting there to be a balance between the top of that painting and the bottom of the painting so while I'm I'm smudging in some more highlights here just to make it feel three-dimensional and again I am aware that this is not a realistic tree I know that it's just that I do like there to be an illusion of three-dimensional Yes. At the, at the end of the day, I'm painting onto a flat surface and I think painting's like a magic trick that if you can create something that gives you the illusion of a three-dimensional space or an emotional response to it, that's just plain amazing. Now, here I go. I'm using this uh, more square 
type palette knife again one of my favorites and I'm using on this on the palette I'm picking up the red and the gold at the same time using the palette knife and I'm scraping it very lightly across the surface just to pick up some of the areas that have become rough from the previous mark making that I've done and that's how it can create this this sort of um, oh, organic look I suppose is what I'm trying to say and again I'm going through just picking up the grass look now this is dried now this is dried overnight and you can see how my reds have darkened and I'm much happier with that now but I'm just going to start refining bits I'm using an old debit card it could even be a store card though I think it's a debit card and I'm picking up gold just near the edge of that card and then very lightly just scraping it upwards and it creates this like I say this organic feel to it and at the bottom there I'm adding in the sap green mixed with a little bit of indigo and a little bit of the gold as well so it makes for an interesting colour and I keep going this is now coming to a stage where I'm going I really like this and you've got to make a decision as an artist at what point do I stop so can you I, I can feel it from from watching this but there's there's a moment when I'm gonna have to put the tools down otherwise I could spoil it and I'm loving this now I'm loving it but I keep fiddling with it and messing about with it just adding in more texture some color definition I'm worrying about is there too much red do I need to add in a bit more green at the bottom or does it need to be more blue so it's decision time is coming I've reverted back to my small palette knife there and there you go I'm adding in a little bit of blue if I add in that little bit of blue can you see how it works with the background part it just adds that little bit of balance there now it's time to sign it yet again because I painted over it I'm struggling to get it right in there um, and so I made the decision to paint over that particular area where I scraped it in and it's finished and here it is it's beautiful I'm really pleased that I worked on that red and very imaginatively I've called it three red trees of course and it looks great in its frame I hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for watching take care bye for now